Ladies and gentlemen, join us today, Mrs. Blind Justice, Christina hey. Nelson. Coming to us from, uh, are, are you still in South Carolina? Or in North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, it's a good thing we've got two of them because, you know, if we lose one, we've got a backup. I, I, <laughs> uh, but yeah, right. so coming to us from North Carolina where there is a, I, I mean, I, I, I actually, I think I, I must have subconsciously assumed, given your recent experiences, that you were a little deeper in the sound. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Christina's husband mm. is, uh, is Mike Nelson, Blind Justice. And he does it well together. Obviously, they're they're uh, an incredible activism team, where uh, Christina, uh, you know, supports her husband being out front usually as the blind combat veteran. Right. For some reason, talking to statists, they're much less likely to tell you to to, to piss off when you can say, uh, "No, I'm a blind combat veteran." Right? You would so, you would think. Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, around so here. Recent events accepted, perhaps, but by right. and large, together, you guys do an amazing job. You do a great job supporting Mike, what he does, too, going out as a blind man, doing First Amendment audits is amazing. And and to see uh, the, the both successful and unsuccessful First Amendment audits he has performed, uh, I got to say, YouTube.com slash Blind Justice. Check out the channel. A lot of great videos. You'll get, you will, you can go down a very entertaining rabbit hole with, uh, with the justices channel there. Yeah. And just quick explanation for those who don't know, uh, first amendment audit is you just walk into someone where you're not sure, or you walk into somewhere, some government building or area where you legally have the right to film, but you're not sure that that right is going to be respected. And you mm -hmm. audit the authorities respect for the first amendment. That's only a, a small part, really, of, of what uh, what Blind Justice is about. But you've had incredible success with this recently and uh, have, have made a lot of news and gotten a lot of attention in, in a, in a uh, out of a negative experience. But in, I think, a, a very positive and enlightening way with your recent story. So um, Christina and, and, and Mike are, are not just colleagues as, as fellow activists, but personal friends of mine who have. Helped out here with some of the construction directly in Gardenia, and it's been great to have them and their kids here. But Christine, is, is there anything else that, that I missed by way of introduction? Or you want to just jump into this recent story and, and um, no. one of the Carolinas, right? Well, no one, just one little piece of which is kind of a lot of the focus. While there is a First Amendment um, aspect, of course, a lot of the things he's checking up on when he goes places is ADA compliance, and by that I mean the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yes. And it's, it is shocking how often we come across um, issues in government buildings. Like these government entities sign paperwork that says, yes, we are in compliance in order to receive federal funds. And then they're not. <laughs> Wait, um, so government agents lie? I know. I know this is shocking to you, Adam, but um, <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and, it, and it may be a lie of like, just they just forget or they don't know. I think a lot of it is truly a lack of training and understanding of what the ADA is. Um, so there, there may be some measure of innocence there, but um, sure. if you're signing your name on something, find out what it is. Well, I'd, I'd like to think that for a lot of these bureaucrats, and oh, CJ just put up on stage, uh, December 12, 2019, Mike, oh, uh, mm -hmm. all right, now he's just playing stuff. Well, I won't try to read that. Okay. No, but I, I think for a lot of these bureaucrats, it's kind of pro forma, just, oh yeah, of course you sign, like, and I, even in the Marines, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure with Mike in the Army and, and with you dealing with the VA, it's like, I know this paperwork is a lie, but I'm going to sign it because that's how things work around here. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, there's no problem with it. It's you're, you're literally correcting a glitch in the system. In other cases, you're unwittingly committing fraud. And in some cases, knowingly committing mm -hmm. fraud. But what's so offensive about that, and I'm really glad you point this out, Christina, is that this is coming from the government that shuts down private businesses for mm -hmm. failure to comply with the ADA. Yep, and there's, yep. a lot, there's a lot of stupid shit in the ADA, right? I mean, like 
ramps have to be exactly six inches. And if they're not, then you get shut down or, you know, handrails here and there. But the general spirit of access of a standard that yeah. government is imposing on others, they really should at least respect themselves. Well, and that's really what it is. It's, it's, we're not, we don't typically call for private businesses to adhere to the ADA. Like we may mention right. an accessibility issue like at, while we're there, but it's not with the intention of getting them in trouble with government at all. Um, we highlight the issues with government. Really, it shows that the government's broken. Like, <laughs> it's like, look, this is their own. These are their own rules, and they're not. Only, they're not even following their own rules. Like, yeah. but they're enforcing them on everybody else. So, yeah. yeah All right. So, to this recent story in uh, in the deep south of North Carolina. I yeah. believe it was Constitution We're Day. We're actually in the northern part of North Carolina. But okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, Constitution Day. Take it away. Well, no, what do you, you'll tell so my my under, I, I got to watch part of this live actually. Uh, oh, I was yeah. I was sitting here with uh with our, our friend Peter Yabel on uh on the roof of, of the camp kitchen. Nice. And uh we did get to watch uh, a good chunk of this live, but I, I missed the beginning. But uh, my understanding was that Mike was at a demonstration with you and he had a sign that said on, on one side, uh, happy Constitution Day, and on the other side, fuck the police. Is that Was that it? It was only eight letters. It was fuck cops. That fuck cops. Ah, and good, and good, there was... Yeah, there was no demonstration. It was literally just me and him we went for a walk and he carried the sign. Now, this fuck cop sign comes from months and months of trying to play by the rules and go and redress the government through the, the system and go into the the city. So we had issue, you know, when the cops came and kidnapped Mike out of the car as the passenger in the vehicle and nothing was done. Okay. So, so far as we know, those cops have not been reprimanded. They're still working as police officers. Um, that we've tried to meet with the chief of police multiple times. We've reached out to the city, the town alderman. We've reached out to the town mayor. None of them will return our calls. None of them will talk to us, except the exception of one alderman. Let me be fair. One of them did a little bit, um, but they're not doing anything. We've went to the um, county commissioners. Um, we took it up to the state level. We've tried to reach out to the governor. We've reached out to the general assembly. We've reached out to the judicial board um, review committee. And we're getting nowhere. And so we come back around full circle and we're like, okay, let's raise awareness here. Let's get the people here, make sure they know, you know, what's going on. This is corrupt. This is broken. And their mayor in this town decided that he would write a proclamation to declare this week Constitution Week, which is a slap in the face to all these businesses who have been shut down around town because of this ridiculous draconian measures that have taken place due to COVID-19 and all these shutdowns. So now they're gonna be like, yay, constitution. And we're like, okay. In the order, in the proclamation, it said the mayor requested that the people step up and defend and exercise and even defend the constitutional rights, right? Their rights as outlined in the constitution because rights that are lost may not be regained. Mm. And I'm like, okay, is that a threat? Because it's accurate. Because we see this when cops demand ID for nothing and then say it's suspicious when you don't provide it. It's like, no, that's not suspicious. That's just being a human and having rights. Protecting <laughs> your own privacy. Right, exactly. But when, when that becomes suspicious, it's clearly there's a problem, right? Yep. And so we walked around with this one sign and it was just the two of us. I had the camera and he had the sign. And we were chatting with people live and trying to, you know, tell people what was going on. And this nonsense, I, I guess you can see this, starts happening. Yep. Like, there it is. I've never in my life been in this kind of situation. This guy is currently doing like a basketball thing. He's like yelling, you know, I can't touch you, but we can touch your sign. Let's take a sign and like calling for people to help him. Yeah, it was. And then all these guys going by, they call it rolling coal. Like clearly these trucks behind him are there to intentionally harass us, right? Like. The guy in the he came from the red truck, which he parked illegally in the intersection. Uh, and then this guy, we call this guy in the gray shirt Quiver Lip. <laughs> I don't know his name. 
Well, it's Christina, Christina, before we get into some of those details, I, I want to ask a, a bigger question about yeah. uh, the kind of people that confronted you in this kind of provocative activism. Because, I, I mean, to me, it's, I mean, don't they print T-shirts that say fuck cops? Like, how is it that big a deal to have it on a sign? You know, like, what are they going to do? I, I didn't, I, I wouldn't have imagined that the sign itself would have provoked such a strong reaction. I'm sure you were surprised by the intensity yeah. of that. I mean, you just wanted to go around and have conversations. And that makes sense. Yes. That people, people would have angry responses and say, fuck your sign. And then maybe you can talk to them, right? Or they would say, hey, thumbs up, let's chat, you know, or mm -hmm. what do you mean there? You know, and you can, you can, um, you had plenty of those interactions too, right? Well, initially we had a lot of thumbs up during like the first hour. We got some waves, we got some thumbs up. You know, people were pleased to see that someone was basically that they weren't alone, right? I think that's a big part of it. Um, yeah, especially and, right now. Yeah. And because a lot of people are hunkering down and hiding instead of stepping forward and taking a stand. And I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them. I, I feel that. Um, we had a couple people get out of the car. One of them came over to talk to us, which is great. Like, yes, let's talk. But it was a talk at us. And it was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And God's going to change your sign. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, but it was all about the word. Like, it was just the F-bomb, right? That was the huge focus. Like, I don't want my kids seeing that. I'm like, then just keep driving. Like, <laughs> I don't, I just don't understand. Like, okay, oh, then geez. go. Um, and then we had another guy get out and yell at us. So we had one interaction that day. This guy right here. Yeah, you found him. <laughs> His sign says, fuck this guy. Which I'm uh, like, yes, hold your sign, man. That's awesome. See, like, that's what you yeah. want, right? Is the yeah. mutual participation, enhancement of the conversation. If you yes. really want to feel, yeah, fuck this guy. But then yes. I'm sure he learned the backstory on Mike. And Yeah, and they, they talked for a while. And it was really cool because even though the chat couldn't necessarily hear it very well because of the wind and the trucks, um, at some point, this guy starts folding up his sign and just kind of puts it away and keeps talking for a minute. Like, yes. he... It was cool. Like it was a really good conversation. Like, you know, there's cognitive dissonance and there's only so much that they can, that he could hear at the moment, you know, and cause you're going against like years and years of indoctrination and hero worship and all this stuff. So it was a good conversation. Yeah. So, no, especially separate, from, separate from the bigger issues and the news coverage and everybody who you're, you're generally reaching with, you know, a positive pro-freedom, you know, encouraging, empowering message with this whole story. It's really about those guys. Yes. That, that was a life-changing experience for that dude. Yeah. If he lets it be. Yeah. I don't think, it, I don't think it couldn't be. I mean, yeah. when you're, when you, you get so angry that you have to make a sign to counter protest, a single dude protesting with a sign by himself. And then by the end of the conversation, Never mind. I think my sign was wrong. <laughs> that, you, there's, okay. Yeah, there's, yeah, I mean, okay. uh, there's, there's no way that doesn't get into somebody's consciousness pretty deep. I hope but, so. but, the, but the bigger question I want to ask you, Christine, in terms of the okay. response here uh, is, is about the people who really uh, ended up being a lot more aggressive. And, and, and I do, of course, next want to hear the story of how this all unfolded, because it does it does get worse. But yeah. of, of the people who approached you uh, with, with the extreme hostility. We saw, you know, the guy who took the sign, uh, people burning out their tires, yelling, honking, general harassment, uh, intimidation and threats, things like that. It, it seems to me that there would be two categories of people who might do that. And one is the genuinely mentally disturbed. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's why I'm, I'm saying like, it seems it seems a bit surprising that a sign that really just I mean the other side was Happy Constitution Day, right? Yeah. Um, but, but when you see that one side, all you see is fuck cops. You see a guy walking around the sign says fuck cops. You don't have to be insane to have a negative response to that, no. but to allow your negative response to lead you to stop your car, get out of the car, and yell crazy shit, we're not talking about well-adjusted human beings so there's that there's that category or or i should say and or you're gonna have cops off duty and even when cops are off duty 
they enjoy a large degree of legal immunity where they can go and, and commit crimes and mm-hmm. know that they're going to get away with it. I mean, if uh, one cop shows up to the scene of a crime and turns out the criminal is a fellow cop and doing something that can be covered up, eh, they're probably going to cover it up, right? right. So right. What, what, what do you think of that from these extreme reactions? How many of them were people who were really totally deranged versus maybe some who were actually police off duty or uh, more intentional in their harassment that in that sense. So, okay. So more of a thought out harassment as opposed to a knee jerk, emotional, unstable response. Um, I, that's really hard to gauge, but there, so there's some that were clearly just in just unstable. Like you could tell that they're just not all there, but they're just mad and they're, they, in, they have an addiction to this sort of drama, I guess. So, um, you know, acting out of that. But when, you know, when they call their friends and chase us around town, like literally following us everywhere we went for like an hour, hour and a half. One of them went so far as to, he was fa- on Facebook Live for three and a half hours following us around. Three and a half wow. hours. We, we have his name. We told the police because this is clear harassment, stalking, all of that. Like this is, I mean, it's a no brainer. And as far as I know, they've done nothing. Like we released a, a video just the other day. It's like introducing Worf as the thumbnail. He's one of the police that were there because they were there and they were just looking at all of this stuff happening. People, I mean, this is, this is as far as like, you know, they're, they claim to enforce laws, right? Well, laws are being broken all around them and they're doing nothing, but they were going to follow us home. And so at one point they started to follow us home. Right. And then they had a, literally a herd of people behind them. There was a parade of like 15 trucks and cars following the police car home. And we're like, we don't want that. We want you to, you know, if you want to do something, if you're claiming to do something, then send the, you know, tell them not to do criminal activity. <laughs> And they wouldn't do it. So I think there was a lot of friends there that, so whether or not they were actually cops, off-duty cops, um, I do think there were a lot of people there that were friends with the cops. And these were, you know, they were there supporting them. At one point, the police chief walked over to the crowd across the street from the video where they took it, they um, attacked Mike and took a sign over at City Hall. There was a big crowd over there. The police chief walked over there shortly after that attack and thanked the crowd he told them, thank you for your support. We appreciate it. I'm like, no, 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 no. The response is, hey, you're under arrest. Even, even just what you're doing is criminal, like harassment, stalking, the way you're driving. These things are things we could arrest you and cite you for. Stop it. <laughs> just stop it. And there was none of that. So whether they were cops or not, I don't know. But the cops appreciated them. Sounds like bootlickers have a lot of time on their hands. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, I say that in a somewhat facetious, condescending way, but seriously, wh- who has the, who not only has the motivation, but the opportunity, the time to just follow someone around because they have a sign that says "fuck cops." Well, it wasn't a Sunday, so. Well, but, but still, like you have nothing better to do. Like, yeah. I, what, what kind of loser is is going to put their time into this of following you around? They were having a good old time. They were having a blast. I mean, like you Harass- thought it was a party. Harassing the hippies, huh? <laughs> I guess. Let, let's run them hippies out of town. That was the goal. I mean, it truly was a lynch mob. Like clear, clearly, they didn't hang. There, you know, he didn't hang Mike. That's supposed how how it's supposed to end. But it is a lynch mob when they're following you around with the intention of harassment and you know the goal of bodily harm. We've gotten all kinds of threats. Well, like, until so, just for the chronology of your story, are, are we missing yeah. any key elements before we get to the point of the police escorting you? Um, that day, I'm not. I don't think so. I mean, so, like we walked, we walked back to the police station um, because they were trying, we were trying, they asked if they could help us. So to be clear, we never called the police. The police approached us and asked, can we help you? And so we're like, okay, we'll give you the opportunity to do what you claim you do. So this is what happened. And we told them about the guy that attacked them, which we found out is actually felony larceny if the item is taken off of the person. Hmm. It's a felony. 
Now, if mm -hmm. it's under $1,000, it's not a felony, typically, unless it's taken directly off the person here in North Carolina. So that would be felony larceny. Um, so we tried to report that rather than just taking the report because they know who we are. They've been to our house. OK, literally, the guy who was taking the report, Wharf, has been to our house before. Um, is he still Commander Wharf? No, 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 no. Does not seem to have that much honor either. Um, he, he lied quite a few times in interacting with us and surprise, um, saying that he didn't know who Mike was and he needed his name. Mike's like, dude, you know, my name, like, I don't want to give you my name and address right here. We're surrounded by people who are trying to, you know, clearly not friendly. Like, um, can you already have that? Just take the report. And he just, he was just stuck on it. And finally the chief of police was like, yeah, we have it. Will you walk back to the station and just confirm it? Well, will you come to the station? And we said we would. So that's where we went. We went over to the police station to confirm um, what they had was accurate. And then that was a whole debacle, whatever. Finally, that was done. And we left after trying to file this report, which later were f the next, I think it was the next day, like a day after they were filed. He was like, oh, well, we're closing them. We uh, found insufficient evidence to do anything. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? So. So then this ended with them escorting you home with a 15 vehicle caravan behind them. So it ended. We So we left the police station. Um, we started walking toward the house and we got like maybe a block. And I, we just looked at, you know, I looked over at Mike and I'm just like, this is, this is stupid. Like, and I gestured to the cops. I'm like, do you see what's following you? Like, look behind you. Do you hear what they're yelling at us? Of course not. Your windows are closed. And so they got out all irritated that we were making them block traffic. And we're like, no, like what? And so it ended with Mike and I splitting up. Um, I walked, I went one way and he went the other because the crowd was more concerned with him than me. And I got to the house, got the car and the kids and we went around and picked them up. Generally. But it took us like an hour and a half to get home. And it's like a, I don't know, half mile, mile walk. It was, it was nuts. Tell me again what city this is. Madison, the town of Madison, North Carolina. In Rockingham are, County. Are, are there <clears throat> other issues with uh, police abuse there? <sighs> yes. <laughs> um, generally, when we hear stories, it's, I wish to be, remain anonymous. And, you know, nobody is willing to let their story be, well, very few are willing to tell their story. So I say yes, but I can't back it up at the moment. Does that make sense? Well, I'm sure there are still plenty of statistics that would uh, back up any problems you might be pointing out with this particular police department. Mm -hmm. But why? Why? Why stand there? Why why make this stand to fight there? When why, why have you chosen to live there? And when are you going to come back and be my neighbor again here? <laughs> oh man! So we we picked Madison before this stuff happened. Okay, like. <laughs> We were doing oh, like, like we didn't know Madison had a police department. Right. <laughs> well, we did, but it was very small uh -huh. and it was a small town and, uh -huh. and 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 really the size of the police department was it was kind of concerning a little bit because there's 18 officers. I think it's 18. Um and there's only 2000 people that live here. Like what? <laughs> okay. So you get a cop, you get a cop, you <laughs> get a cop. Everybody every gets, family a, gets cop. a cop. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, but no, we picked it because we liked the house. It was what we were looking for. That's how it all started in North Carolina with the Guilford County courthouses was Mike was trying to access the um, foreclosures list and was being blocked at the entry point because of his devices. So we didn't, those weren't audits. Like it wasn't like going in to stand there with the camera and see if anybody notices. Like he was going there to do something like with a purpose trying to help us with our search because apparently a lot of the foreclosures in North Carolina, I guess you can only get them, get access to them from the courthouse or so we've been told. So that's what he was trying to do. 
Um, well, we finally found a house, not a foreclosure, because that never happened, out here in Madison that fit our criteria and we liked it. So we moved here. And then literally like the weekend that we were here, like right after Mike and I, we all got into the house. Mike and I went out that night and ta-da, <laughs> they ripped him out of the car and kidnapped him. And that was a blind side. I didn't see that coming. We weren't out doing activism. We were out hanging out together. Like, so we, being the people we are, we can't just let that go under the rug. Like, this is not okay. You can't treat people like this. And if you're willing to do that to us, what are you doing to everybody else who's been living here all this time? Like, the people who aren't speaking up. I, yeah. So how did this lead to Mike's current incarceration and the issue with going into a courthouse and then getting a failure to appear because he was not allowed in because of his... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if he's still wearing this device, but he has a, a, an assisting device that that translates uh, what visual cues into vibrations against his head. Is that right how it works? Um, he has multiple different devices. So there's one actually, uh, one similar to what you're talking about, he wears on his arm. Um, it's called a Sunu band. It's pretty awesome. It's got like a sonar thing that will detect motion or detect what's around him and it buzzes and lets him know what's going on. Um, his phone and different things that are connected to his bone conducting headset that he wears, they talk to him. So it gives him audio of lots of things. And the audio on his phone is like incredibly fast because <laughs> it's given him a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the connection would be um, the bench trial that was set for yesterday morning at 9 a.m. was to try him for the bogus charge of resisting an officer from back in February 21st when as a passenger in the vehicle he did not give his identification to people who he were not even passenger, right not being susp suspected of committing a crime he has no obligation under right. federal law to identify himself right so you know and and he had never like he was still asking questions. He never outright refused to give them. He was, well, why do you want that? Why do you need right. this? Why are you stopping us? Um, and there never even came the point where they said, if you don't provide identification, I am going to arrest you. Like there was never that if this, then this moment, it was just, okay, we're done. You're under arrest. He's like, what? <laughs> um, I don't even think they said you're under arrest or if they just cuffed him. He's oh, grabbing Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so that's where this started. Um, the date has been changed a few times. You had him on last time because um, we were concerned that he was going to be put in jail at his last appearance, which actually got um, continued. So that was on the 13th, maybe? No, the 24th of June. I forget. I don't know. I get them all mixed up. But um, that got continued to yesterday. Yesterday, he shows up at the court. Um, the court has an electronics ban in place which is unconstitutional anyway this is you know it's unconstitutional yeah um, but just, if, if i may a little sidebar the idea that we have accepted that the majority of courts in the united states operate as secret courts as an yes. off the record they're the only ones that are able to have any kind of recording devices in there that's it's it's absolutely insane that Americans have accepted this as the norm that you can't as long, I know that as long as you're not interfering obviously right. uh, that, that that courts as the government's dispute resolution services that they're not open to the basic transparency of you know full video recording of all proceedings like yeah they are secret courts now yes. you might say semi secret well every secret court is only semi secret they let you see what they want you to see we have secret courts in America. And that's Absolutely. the norm. Absolutely. It's the norm and the and the people, the the populace, a lot of them will fight on behalf of that to keep it that way. They're like, what's the rules? You have to follow the rules. Everybody has to follow the rules. I'm like, what well, it's not the rules. <laughs> They're breaking the rules. And yeah, so um they have the electronics ban completely busted. Um in the electronics ban, there is a caveat of medical device. Right. Of course, because they're going to cover their own ass and put that in there to make sure that it looks good on paper, right? Well, um, they don't want to stop people for, you know, having an insulin machine hooked up to them or something. Or hearing aid. Hearing aids, actually, a lot of them, they can connect to iPhones now. They connect, like, they've been, 
disability accessibility tools, like they're advancing because this is 2020 people. Like it's not the same old stuff that they used to have. You don't have to know Braille anymore. If you're blind, you have all these different things available to you, but the government facilities aren't letting people use them. And so they're trying to keep them in the dark ages. Um, so with this electronic ban, they have the medical condition and exemption or exception rather. Um, they have these policies in place. So we put in the ADA request to try to, you know, play by their little rules. Um, the judge didn't just deny it, but he made it into a judge's order and threatened to hold Mike in criminal contempt if he brought his devices, his accessibility devices into the courtroom. The large majority of them were issued by the prosthetics department at the VA. Uh, uh, the layers of irony. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly this is illegal. This is against the Constitution. This is against the Americans with Disabilities Act. This goes against the North Carolina GS 168, 128. I forget. But... It, it's illegal is what I'm saying. Like it's breaking all of their rules here. These multiple different disability laws that are in place. And so Mike refused the refusal or however that works. There was some back and forth. He's like, okay, well you did this improperly. This is how you broke the law here, 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 here. He lays it out and is clear, right? And this is a judge. So they should be able to confirm this and look this up. Um, this went back and forth. The judge, I, we have it posted um, on the YouTube page, a link because since then, um, on the 30th, I believe it was, we emailed all of the members of the General Assembly of North Carolina. Uh, Mike sent them an email to file a remonstrance against this judge, Judge um, Chris Freeman, to basically impeach him. They have the power to impeach the judge and outlined why and you know all the reasons why and everything and then the supporting documents. So all of that is linked on the YouTube page. I think it's in a Google document. Um, in the community page. So it's just too much to try to go through. Um, but how, okay, so jump, in, jump into the next critical point here. Yes. He, he goes up to the security checkpoint at the courthouse. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so the father on the 30th, we showed up yesterday morning. Mike, well, he showed up. I didn't go. He goes to the courthouse. He presents himself in good faith to go and stand before the judge. The right. assumption is that the judge is going to follow the law. Um, and he goes That's and presents terrible, himself. Hey, 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 I got to stop you. That is a terrible assumption to assume <laughs> that a government official who has no accountability is going to follow the law. Yeah, well, I'm maybe not. not so maybe assumption is wrong. So the, we're acting in good faith that right, the judge right. will, will follow the law. And he gets to the door and the guards stop him, which we anticipate this, right? Like they stop him like, you can't bring this in here. And he's like, well, I can. And this is why. And they're like, no, 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 the judge said. And, you know, then there's the conversation of, do you remember your oath? Did you, you know, did you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution or the state Constitution? In, in my head, I'm hearing this in Mike's voice. Well, actually, I can. And here's why. I can't even do it. Mike has just such a beautiful demeanor just, and tone of voice for saying something like that. Well, actually, I can. And here, see, I can't even say it without no. that, like, sarcasm or, like, condescending <laughs> tone no, in my voice. Dear. But Mike is just perfect, just... Well, actually, I can, and here's why. <laughs> it's I am, I can't, whatever. Like, he's just super, yeah, no, I know. He's super chill, he's super polite, he's super zen. It's, uh, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he, so he gets there. They say, no, you can't go in. His attorney arrives, and the attorney's like, well, I'll go in, stand before the judge. They've already talked about this. He goes before the judge. While the guards are keeping Mike from entering the courthouse, the judge issues a failure to appear warrant, which then the guards go and enforce. So it was, no, 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 you can't come in. Okay, we're going to arrest you for not coming in. And they took him to jail. Now, I'm sure it's by some legal hypothetical within a judge's authority to do something like that. But it's also extremely unusual. Hmm. I currently have several failure to appear warrants with my name on them right now. <laughs> Nobody's bothering me about it. You know, I mean, they're petty things, obviously. And, and, and so is this. But why would the judge just go ridiculous? Because he could have issued a failure to appear and said, 
this is out there and we're going to do as little to enforce this as possible, but this is a check mark on your record that you did not comply and you weren't here on this day. And now we're going to deal with your lawyer like that. That's what happens to, to rich white people in, in, in our legal system anyway. Right. Uh, but w why? Like, is, is there something else? About, I mean, are they, are they really trying to run you out of the, out of town as the judge? I think, in so. I, I think they're all complicit because I think the initial stop in February and I'm speaking from me, I think. OK, so um, in February, we still had license, a license plate from Washington State. And we had been doing activism in Greensboro because remember, if you remember, Mike had been arrested um, in the health department. That's where they gave him a brain bleed and then turned him out like into the streets, I guess, from the jail. Um, he was picked up by the ambulance, not responsive. And he, he has like a five hour memory gap there where they couldn't get him to identify himself, I guess. And so they really, really wanted him to ID. What I think potentially is that the cop who Benfield potentially recognized that these were Washington tags. Um, they confirmed at the police station that they knew of Mike and the work that he does. Mm -hmm. um, and that they were going to show the city boys how you get somebody's name. And they're going to keep backing each other. And so here we are and they just keep doubling down instead of stopping and going, Hey, is what we're doing illegal? Oh, maybe we should change. They just, double down more and do more. So not only did they arrest him, they set his bond at $50,000 cash bond with a stipulation that he stay home. He's not allowed to leave the house. So if I go and bail him out today, it's $50,000 cash. And once well, I get him home, he can't, it's, it's unmonitored apparently, but like if we walk to the playground yeah, and a right. cop goes by, they'll come and arrest him. So it seems like you 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 came to small town Madison, North Carolina, with the intent of just living well there, and you recognize shockingly, there's uh there happens to be a small town big police department racket, and they recognized you as a threat pretty mm -hmm. much right away. Yeah, that's what it would seem. It would see, it seems like a smarter approach to that would just be leave us alone. Like, it's like when the when the person runs up to the guy with the camera and says, don't record me. Like, well, <laughs> then just leave him alone. And then well, you're not on camera. Yeah, well, they could have been smarter about this. But I think if they left you alone and you stayed there long enough, eventually you would have chipped away at their entire bullshit criminal police racket. Mm. And they, they probably in some, you know, uh, you know, abstract sense recognized that and emotionally felt threatened by it. These are people threatening our livelihoods because this racket is our livelihood. Yeah. And so they they went after you and uh I mean you're right that they could have they could have done things a lot more subtly. I mean if they were smart they would have done this all covertly and you know like slash your tires and poisoned your food and shit like that. I mean I I don't um, want to give them any ideas because no. I got more um, ideas but yeah. They, so the um, the back the blue um, people who also were Trump supporters and like literally they'll just yell, by, they'll, they'll drive by us and yell things. Still, it's just they'll yell Trump 2020 or back the blue. And I'm like, how is that relevant? Like, I, I'm just walking down the street. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, that's a it's very strange. I um, think politics has been taken over by cultural manipulation. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> but one so, of the guys that came out, they actually slashed his tires and broke uh, his window. Yeah. 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 Not, and then not surprising at this point. Yeah. They actually the other day, uh, I think it was Monday, a guy was out uh, with recording and oh. they boxed him in with their vehicles. The guy goes up in front of him and apparently backed up into them and into the the victim. And then claimed that he rear-ended him. Like it he's got it all on camera, thankfully. Like he recorded it. But this is this is where I live right now. Hi. <laughs> all right. So Christina, I want to make sure that you have enough time to get people on board with the help that you need right now. Specifically, as I understand it, Mike is locked up on bogus charges and is being harassed, threatened, 
in order to accept some kind of bail deal that would be totally inappropriate and violate his rights. And we have a call flood on in order to get him released and charges dropped. Is that a good summary? Generally, yeah. It's And, and I would request that anyone who calls be respectful. Um, and, you know, we can be the better person, the bigger person, um, and not start cussing people out. You do you, but that's my request. Well, when you're dealing with violent criminals, it's still better to kiss their butt than to piss them off, right? I mean, just <laughs> especially when they have your, head. especially when they have your husband by the balls, right? Like, I mean, he's he's the punching bag right now. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that they're punching him. <laughs> um, last time he, know. right? Last but time he was in that job, he, he has experienced far worse than it's being punched in yeah. police custody from and you go back again just praising his record and his, his activism and encouraging people um if you're not already convinced to make this phone call right now go back and, and check out the youtube channel blind justice yeah but sorry back to the, the immediacy of the call flood please um yeah it's it's to release him it's for his immediate release um and potentially even removal of this judge so i mean you if the sheriff's job is to enforce law and they've been informed that someone is actively and like currently breaking the law, not just state law, but also federal law. I would think it would be partially their job to go and intervene, not to enforce those orders that are illegal. Um, so it's calling for them to release him. Um, I, yeah. I'm, I'm really struggling with the direction here because I know the system is so broken and the system here is so corrupt that they just keep doubling down. Yeah. So we're, we are um, looking into the filing of the habeas corpus. Um, I need a local lawyer who will be here to do that. Our lawyer apparently has already has plans to go out of town and will not be present to file that. Um, so if there is a someone who can actually physically go to the Rockingham County Courthouse to file that, to get him out. Um, once that's done, then that would be, you know, calls to encourage that they grant that. Um, uh, but as it currently stands, it's reminding them of their oath. It's um, informing them that this judge has broken multiple laws by using threats, coercion, and intimidation to deprive a qualified individual with a disability of his disability rights. Mm -hmm. Like, and just human rights, people. Like, this is just unacceptable. So it's remember your oath, uphold the oath to protect and defend the constitution um, and let this guy out. And so we're calling the courthouse. Uh, we've been calling the jail. I'm not sure who else to call um, at that level. So we've um, stepped up to call the attorney general. Um, here is Josh Stein, North Carolina. Um, we have calls into the, um, what's that? We got numbers scrolling on the screen there for people to call oh, at thanks. least to start. Yeah. So encourage everybody, please check that out. Please yeah. make a call today. I'm trying to put updates on the Blind Justice page. Um, we have a summary video. It's still 15 minutes long of the court cases that we're up against here in North Carolina. Um, this morning, I put out a little four minute video to summarize what was happening today. So I'll try to make sure that I have some quick snippet updates um, as the day progresses um, so you guys know what's going on because I know it's a lot if you jump into the channel and try to figure out what's going on there's just a lot there's a lot there I'm not the best at summaries so <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, I know in, in, in a bigger sense right now uh, you guys must be torn uh, when when faced with with an enemy and not that it's any individual but the system that empowers individuals to do bad things. And mm -hmm. when it's an 18 person police department in a small town in North Carolina, uh, you know, I, I have this fantasy of the Nelsons showing up and cleaning house and reforming everything and ending the whole racket and, and, and bringing, t taking this dark cloud off from above this community. And, and, I, and I hope that it plays out that way. I hope that you mm -hmm. find an opportunity to pull the thread that unravels the sweater of the whole racket. But I understand there's a countervailing position of, well, maybe we're just banging our head against another wall and maybe we should just get out of here 
with uh, with some good PR and having woken some people up and with uh, with with their lives intact. I gotta say, mm-hmm. I I know that your 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 kids are uh, very understanding and supportive, and you're both extremely blessed to have that mm-hmm. kind of immediate family support. I hope they're not uh, they're not taking this too harshly because I know how proud they are of, of you and their father. Yeah, the little ones uh, are. We haven't told them what really was going on, you know. Um, the big two are doing okay. The you know my son he gets angry, you know he's the guy, and oh thanks Perth, <laughs> and uh, Lily she's they they both have really stepped up to help a lot. Like they agreed they do a really good job. So they're strong strong people. Yeah. Well, as as much as I want you to go and and clean up this town. If, if you decide that this is an insurmountable fight and, and I have to have you here as a neighbor again, I would not be disappointed in that either. I know. But you, you have my undying support regardless. And uh, particularly in, in a situation like this where your activism leads you to uh, a point of conflict, not of your own making. And we have uh, one of the most committed libertarian activists I know locked up right now. And, and I will say one other thing about Mike for, for anybody in my audience who's unaware of, uh, and, and I'm not saying this as, as, as simply just a way to sneak in a promotion for my book here, but you know that this book is my, as my personal manifesto uh, is, and you saw in that video, Mike is wearing the freedom hat. He wears it all the time. <laughs> yeah. This, and this book represents, uh, you know, something more than just a book itself. But the message of brand and everything else, Mike Nelson, I've, I've actually designated as the heir to freedom, as in if anything happens to me, it becomes his brand. And they're, they're, for everything, I, I can't think of a better way, uh, Christina, right now to, to offer testimony to his character and, and his ability and uh, you know everything else that I know about him and that, that we all have experienced together. So I, I hope that everybody today who's watching this will at very least Take a few minutes, make the phone call. This is one of those times. I don't promote bullshit phone floods. You know, I I, when it has a chance of making a difference, I'm gonna ask you to make a phone call. This is one of those times. And uh, Mike Nelson, Christina Nelson, Blind Justice, as his stage name goes, the YouTube channel Blind Justice, they deserve your support so much. But especially right now at one of these critical points for an activist where you're in jail and you need the government that's holding you to know that other people are watching. Yes. Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. Any any last thoughts or any other things that, that, that people need to know to connect with you to get more information about this or, or to contact you directly if they want to offer assistance? Okay. Um, if you want to email us, you can email us at insightisfree at gmail.com. That's going to be the best way to contact me. We have a phone number that's also listed on the YouTube site. Um, but right now it's just a little easier if you email me. <laughs> um, if it's urgent, you can call that number. It's uh, 360-226-6297. Um, but m- otherwise, insight is free at gmail.com is the best way to get in touch. Yep. Great. Easy to remember email. Insight is free at gmail.com. The YouTube channel is Blind Justice. Christina, best of luck to Mike. And please, when he gets out, give him a big hug and a kiss for me. Oh, yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me.